and welcome back everybody to Chicago Clash. We are now getting started with round three. We're going to bring up a group A match. It'll be Edwin versus Hector. I think we can show those group standings now to see how the last round kind of shook out. Um, so it looks like uh, only 1-2-0 in group, group B. B yeah. That is going to be interesting to see how things play out later. Uh, just Josh standing alone at 2-0. Whereas in group A, we have both Tyler and Jared standing at 2-0. Um, yeah, no one's, everyone's still in it. Three, two could still definitely yes, be cut depending sure. on how things shake out, especially in group B where there might only be one person right. who breaks away right. fully from, uh, from everything. So definitely a lot of ways this can go down. Before we get into the next match, I wanted to shout out one of our sponsors really quickly. Uh, Chicago Clash is brought to you by Dead Draw Gaming. If you're looking for singles from Temporal Forces, you can grab what you need over at deaddrawgaming.com. If you're enjoying the tabletop content here, Dead Draw Gaming's YouTube channel has even more. They also have the recently relaunched Dead Draw Gaming podcast where I, Etchy, Bring on the various experts from the team every episode to help you better understand the meta. If you subscribe to their YouTube channel before the next podcast episode, you'll be entered into a Paldean Fates ETB giveaway. And they also have a new Patreon that you can join to support their content. Patreon supporters get access to bonus videos, discounts on CutterTap and the Dead Draw Gaming store. Links will be in the chat. Thank you so much to Dead Draw Gaming. Um, we're going to have Giratina V-Star versus Chan Pao. And by Giratina V-Star, we're specifically Lost Zone Lost Tina Zone V-Star. Tina, yes. Very different. Uh, very interesting, too. Reports. One of the big... Oh, and we're ready to get into it. We're just going to go. <laughs> just I want, go. I want our go, 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 go. Uh, but yeah, Moss and Tina got pretty interesting in this new yeah, set. So uh, reports of its death have been greatly exaggerated, <laughs> is what was what I would say. Because, I mean, people were expecting Moss and Tina to kind of fall off a little bit, mainly because you lose past the peak. That's the main one that is an issue that people... That I think is most people's concerns. It's, yeah. it's my concern because that's one of the most powerful things that the Lost Zone Tina could do last format. It's Roxanne Path, Countercatcher, Sableye, and whatnot. In this format, that's not going to be, be the case, but it, it turns out that Lost Tina's matchup spread is actually quite good. And But there are two matchups in particular that Lost Zone Tina can struggle with. One is Lugia, which is nowhere to be found in this tournament, which is yep. good. The other is, unfortunately, Chen Pao, which, mm -hmm. which Edward is sitting across from here right now. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little scary. Yeah, the, the deck's changed a little bit, but not too much. Uh, the Iron Leaves is kind of the biggest addition to fix one of your matchups that was, like, fine before, mm -hmm. but now becomes very solid. Now you can deal with Charizard very easily. And Charizard, very common in this tournament. So it seems like a great choice yes. in general, except for this Chien Pao matchup. I think Lost Stone Tina is something that is a sleeper pick for EUIC. It has a really good win rate online. I think everything else kind of has middling win rate so mm -hmm. far in these online tournaments between that 48 to 52% range. Lost Stone Tina stands above the pack at around 54%-ish. It it just has generally good matchups, but I mean, this Chien Pao man matchup is pretty bad even with Manaphy, and it looks like Edwin might not be playing the Manaphy at, at all, it seems. Yeah, no Manaphy. Uh, interesting to note here, too. So, first of all, Hector's doing uh, his turn. Uh, he got the Vesible, got the Nest Ball for the Phrygy. I did not see if he went first or second. I'm hoping more, Edwin had more to play if he did go yeah, first. Yeah, I think Edwin's going second here, but we'll see. Okay. Um, but yeah, other thing to note, too, is there's no canceling clone, so it's not really relevant in this matchup anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, no canceling clone for Chien Pao, similar to Jared. Right. Just isn't playing it. Um and is going to start with the concealed cards for Edwin. Does at least did get the Buddy Poffin off of that and a Nest Ball, so can actually get pretty much anything he wants. There's here. Comfy and Buddy Poffin, and in a normal scenario, this is like the best part. This is the best start you could possibly hope for as mm -hmm. Tina. You get tons and tons of resources out of your deck. You get to set up your Comfies. You get to draw lots of cards off of your various flower selections. Put a bunch of cards in your Lost Zone to set up for your attackers and your Mirage Gate. But in this matchup. Do you really want to put three comfies down when you don't have a mana fee for uh, Hector to just scary. eat with your with yeah. your with your Moonlight Shuriken? I'm not sure. Yeah, no mana fee. Uh, ooh, getting rid of the gate over the lost vacuum. Uh, definitely an interesting decision. But yeah, like you're saying, um, no mana fee kind of fundamentally changes how you approach a lot of yeah. your turns in these matchups. You have to be way more careful. Uh, you commonly would see people if they weren't playing mana fee in these kinds of matchups just go really wide with Giratinas and right. rely on them as much as possible. We're gonna see one. Comfy just off the buddy poffin. Looks like we'll one is, is just gonna go and thinking three. Three. about grabbing okay. two, but it feels so bad. It yeah. feels so bad flooding your board with these seventy HP Pokemon, knowing that Ninja is probably in the cards for Hector. Yeah, and Hector does play the Mana Fee himself, so can block the Green Ninja play mm, coming right. forward. Gonna get those buddy poffin Comfy's. Those are the Nest Ball, so we can get a Tina as needed. Um, can also get Cramorant, get some damage down. We, get ready for later. We pretty much never see this happen, but technically, given that Edwin took vacuum, technically, we 
this Tina deck is capable of a turn one <laughs> Moonlight Shuriken. And, you know, actually very relevant nowadays in the new format is Prime Catcher. Right. Just allowing you to just snipe things super easily. However, it is prized, it is prized. for Adlin here. So um, normally one win condition for Tina here would be that you could Prime Catcher up that lone fridge box, knock it out with Cramorant, and suddenly your opponent can't attack. Or they might only be able to use that first attack for 120 instead, mm -hmm. of, instead of knocking out something large. So that is a win condition that is accessible to Lost Box in general now, but not this game. Right. Let's put that Tina down. Gonna nest ball probably for another Tina here, I have to imagine. Or a Cramorant if, uh, if there is a path to get to four here. But doesn't look like a chorus has been found yet. So is he gonna grab that second Tina? And just, uh, important to note too, both our competitors here are 1 1 0. Oh. So mm -hmm. one win, one loss. Both of them still very much in it. And it looks like that, I feel like there's a pass there from Yeah, Edwin. I think it's yeah. a pass while Edwin is prize checking, letting Hector take his turn. Right. Um, but yeah, both 1-1. One, one, uh, we were saying earlier, 3-2 can definitely make top cut, mm -hmm. depending on how the group shakes out. So both these players, very much in it. And uh, if they lose, it's not over. But you really want to win at this point. And you the do, two for sure. Trying to crawl back from 1-2 is a very tough position. You will most likely have to deal with some sort of tiebreaker, and right. you'd rather just just get into that top two right off the bat. But the thing about, I would say this matchup is Chen Pao favored, but if Hector doesn't get a good start, doesn't find some of these poppins as, as he blows into his hands for luck, gets poffin and nest ball, which is <laughs> great. So like I was saying, if, if Hector wasn't able to hit this poffin this turn, you, it could get pretty dicey pretty quickly where your Sableye can start knocking out Babarils and Badoos, and mm -hmm. eventually Roxanne plus Countercatcher in the late game could get you there but if Hector's able to set up two barrels now we're talking a major issue for for Edwin to deal with grabbing a Bidoof and a, a second Bidoof and a second Frigibax there thinking about it looks thinking like thinking about the Frigibax wondering if maybe we should get Manaphy or Ninja here we did play the Nest Ball I believe okay the Nest Ball coming down now so no Manaphy on the bench means that Edwin could potentially go for a Moonlight Shuriken of his own mm -hmm. Depending, but I mean, one of these frigid backs could probably get evolved, in yeah. which case it stops that Moonlight Shuriken from being a great play. And I don't know if we mentioned the Bidoof's ability before. Right. It's called Carefree Countenance, basically blocking any bench damage done to it. So if it's on the bench, Greninja can't attack it. Um, you can't attack it if it's in the act of a course, but uh, leaving those as a Bidoof is actually pretty safe until Sableye comes online, and then it's incredibly terrifying. So we did get the Irida here, so that frigid backs will evolve all the way up to the Bax Caliber, getting some super colds in there. And now uh, Hector can basically do whatever he wants this turn, and it's probably going to be a Moonlight Shuriken. I just looked it up, by the way. It looks like Edwin is actually only playing two Water Energy. So one of them is yeah. prize, which means Moonlight Shuriken, and it's one of the last prizes, so Moonlight Shuriken, yep. not an option in this game, has to rely on that Sableye to clean up these bench Pokemon. Can we get there quickly? There are three comfy now, so it's, it's possible, but if two of them get knocked out this turn, it might be an issue. Yeah, almost all of his gusting options are prized. <laughs> yeah. The boss is prized too, which makes things tough. Um, I don't think... Is there a counter catcher in here? I don't think so. So it might just be relying on Just the one bosses. prime catcher and the two bosses. Two bosses, okay, yeah. Which, again, with prime catcher, it makes sense to be a little bit... Uh, to cut a little bit on some of these corners, but uh, yeah. you're also cutting on the water corners, which is tough. I think previously in, in the format before the rotation, Tina, the standard was you play two boss, one counter catcher. That's right. kind of what people settled on. Some people like two counter catcher, one, one boss. boss. Yeah, it's around that range. And Edwin is kind of matching what it was previously using prime catcher right. in place of counter catcher. But in this matchup, I think counter catcher is actually really important. Mm -hmm. Having that, you know, having two Roxanne and then two counter catchers means that you can play out, you can potentially pull off that play twice, where you can Roxanne counter catcher something, right. and knock out a barrel, and then do it again, knock out another barrel. In this case, not going to be an option for Edwin. They can only do it once in this game. As we see Hector charge up this Radiant Greninja, go for that Moonlight Shuriken. Edwin was probably hoping that this. Radiant Greninja was prized, but alas, <laughs> not the case. Hector taking the first two and not only taking two prizes, but also putting Edwin in a weird position where there's not that much draw power on the board. Did top deck the Poke Gear, so he can at least get into a chorus here pretty mm -hmm. soon. One thing to note about Hector, too, is Hector is another one of the players in this tournament who is known for sticking with one deck and using it for a really long time. Yeah. Has put up really great results with Giratina V-Star, this, um, this format, and it is actually playing Giratina as his second deck. But he did choose to open the Chien Pao here. Um, so we will probably see some Giratina actions from him as well. But yeah, just another player that is forced to kind of branch out. But I know Hector's also been playing Chien Pao a lot recently, too, in previous formats. So was ready for this and seemed like two very strong picks for him. Yeah, I think 
I like the choices. Both decks seem really solid right now. They cover a large range of metagame decks. We see Edwin, Law Zone, and Grass Energy. I don't know what you do from here. <laughs> you don't really have any great <laughs> attackers. You do have the vacuum in hand to kind of accelerate your loss zone just a little bit, but you can't, you possibly you can't possibly bench more comfies and after two of them just got knocked out, right? right. Did lose a temple and I think it was a chorus or something. Um, that was not an item there. Is going to poke here now. See if we, okay. There's the chorus at least. Did finally get one. Um, yeah, it's such a tough spot now for Edwin. How do you even deal with this from here, especially with all your gusting options surprise? You can shred and take one and maybe hope that Hector can't get back into Ninja if you do choose to bench another Comfy after that. But you can shred and take one, and then ideally you want to Sableye knock out these Bidoofs as soon as possible. Right. Because he, he did take the Vacuum too, so he could hit 10 this turn, technically. Technically. If but, he gets Rod too. Yeah. <laughs> he does get the to, Poffin, but it's going to zone it, yeah. You would need to have... Rod as well as the Poffin. Or I, mean, I think if the other comfy wasn't prized, could technically get there. Uh, it'd be close. No, it's still short. It's you still need short, yeah. you need three comfies. Yeah. yeah, three plus two col colorists plus two from the back and plus three comfies could get you to Sableye, but there's not even bench space for two more comfies and Sableye, so it's just not possible this right. turn. Unfortunately, this Tina deck a little bit slower than the Lost Box decks that we've seen so far in the tournament. So these Bidoofs are safe at least for now. At least for now, but Hector does have to find them sooner rather than later. Giratina V starts coming online. Kermant here, and yeah, this is such a... Now that they're involved, they can't do the shred thing. Uh, yeah. You can't really lose impact here, and it might just, just be a for, for 110. 110. Okay, so I, position, I yeah. guess what the 110... The 110 is meaningful in some way in that you can Sableye Lost Mine, a Bidoof, and then clean up the Radiant Greninja for two prizes and right. start to take away some of Hector's draw power. But that is the key here. You have to start getting rid of this draw power if you want to come back in this game. If you rock sand and your opponent has access to two barrels, it's, I mean, it's it's tantamount to not doing anything really. Yeah, and Hector kind of in an interesting position here for what to do with his turn now because if he does just take like say the comfort K and set up ninety damage somewhere else, now mm -hmm. he's in rock sand range uh, without any B barrels set up. Right. Uh, if he doesn't get any this turn, which can be kind of a bad situation. We'll see if he is able to get those B-Barrels set up. If they are, then the Roxanne plays all out. It's devastating. Yes. I would say if Hector is able to get one B-Barrel... If, he, if he's able to get two, I think the knockout is extremely safe. But if you're able to get one, it's a little bit of a, of a tough choice. But you can't really sit around and do nothing because your opponent will just keep attacking. So right. I think you probably do have to knock out something this turn. I think knocking out the Comfy with the Rescue Board and then putting 90 on, on a Tina or something is, is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, has Irida in hand. Doesn't look like there's much else in there, but is going to the deck right now. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how you go through this with Edwin now. This is such a weird spot. Uh, but yeah, it's just going to be hope to save light and clean up. Hope for a whiff here from Hector. Uh, I also think interesting to note is Hector is actually playing the Arctabax. <laughs> <laughs> Arctabax, the the long forgotten backs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, nobody really plays this because they rely on the candies, but it is an option uh, if you're worried about, uh, I guess, like Team Devo. It's nice to have for yeah. that, but that's not really being played right now. Also gives you just other general options in there. It is in play right now. It does also have an attack that does 80 damage, which can be relevant in this matchup for both uh, Sableyes and Comfies if you just want to attack with it and leave a one prizer inactive. Uh, it does die to Shuriken, which is interesting too, to uh, note with its 90 HP, and it does have two retreat costs, so does have some downsides, but does give you an easier, lower, uh, resource-heavy way to get mm -hmm. extra backscalibers online, or prime a second one to come online if they right. just kind of knock out your first one. It prevents any Devo shenanigans from letting you run out of candy. You can be more aggressive with your candies. You can Ultra Ball them away instead of saving them for a worst-case scenario type situation. Makes sense. I've known some friends that have tested their Arctabax and have used it in previous lists, even last format, so... I respect it. This turn, though, I don't think that's a legal card. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's a prime catcher. Yes, that is probably just a proxy prime catcher. It's all good. <laughs> so, audience, please disregard the great catcher on screen. It, imagine that it is very pink and shiny. Yep. So, okay, so we see Hector grab that prime catcher with the Irida and actually going for a two prize KO this turn. I think actually going down to three would have been okay. Mm -hmm. Because 
Edwin, even though Edwin could rock sand the next turn, it's very unlikely that Edwin could rock sand and Sableye in the same at the same time. So I think I maybe would have liked to see the Moonlight Shuriken to hold on to this to hold on to this prime catcher, but I mean being on even prizes obviously has got to feel good because it means that you can just knock out one more Pokemon for the end game. Even mm -hmm. if you do get rock sand, you have so much time to try and search that out. So I can see the, the validity of the of this play and we'll just have to see how Hector chooses to close it out. Yeah, I believe that is also the only gust now that yeah. is going to be relevant for Hector. It does have a counter catcher, however. Um, obviously, with, with Edwin's prize pace right now, it's probably not going to come online at all. He's going to flower select here, vacuum and oh, call. There's it. a second vacuum in this second deck. Vacuum. Interesting. Second vacuum and chose it over. Oh my Mirage gosh! Game. Wow. Chorus is Chorus really going to hit the lost zone here, or is just banking fully on? The Sableye this turn. The Roxanne, too. Yeah, that's and true. Using, you Roxanne yeah. this turn. You you vacuum to try and be able to Roxanne and Sableye this turn, mm -hmm. I guess. That makes sense. I was very, I'm was i very surprised to see a second vacuum in a team list, though. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, vacuum is one of those cards where I, I, when, when City League results were first coming out, I kind of felt like vacuum was being underplayed because there's so many new powerful Ace Specs tools, right? Uh, that just made more more powerful targets for your vacuum to actually get rid of. Uh, but what I realized from playing a lot of games is that there's just so few stadiums now in general, and so mm -hmm. few tools That's in true. general, that like when I was playing Lost Box with two vacuums, there were so many times where it's like, I have this vacuum, I want to use it, there's nothing for me to vacuum. Right. Um, but Edwin here seeing the value and just being able to erase those A specs or uh, just pr pump his own loss zone. Yeah, I think that's the main thing yeah. for Tina. I think if you... Tina's main weakness is that it doesn't get to 10 as fast as some of the other Lost Zone decks. And I think decks like Chen Pao really force you to get there quickly. Like, you have to save light this turn or else you pretty much lose, in, yeah. in my opinion, for Edwin. So this vacuum, the second vacuum, actually helps him get there and be able to potentially do it at the same time as... Uh, Nestle uh, and Gabe. So we see Nest Ball and we see Gabe, but we see no Sableye, and there's only nine in the Lost Zone. So we have to Nest Ball for Comfy, but I think two of them Ugh. are in the discard already. Right. Yeah, so one I don't of them... those got rotted in at any mm. point. It's so just one of them barely prize. short of this yeah. play. Let's look through there. Uh, is it in there? It should... I'm pretty sure that I don't think I saw any rods get played. It does have a concealed card still. We could get there. Maybe Nest... thinking about Nest Balling first to grab Sableye before the concealed cards to thin that option. Yep, is going to conceal the cards first instead. Get rid of the grass energy. Jet and mm -mm. Athena, not exactly what you need. So Edwin could actually, yeah, Edwin could take a knockout. Yeah, with you just Tina. Tina lost impact or Star Requiem. Uh, not not Star Requiem, not there yet. Ken just lost impact. Yeah, though. lost impact for two prizes, but I mean, going down to four and giving your opponent this much yeah, and, time. And Hector can just take one prize too with uh, the Greninja, and just wait at that point yeah. to take another prize. Whenever. Uh, doesn't need to be pressured to put on the champ out to, to get that play, the yes. champ out knockout this turn. Even though it would kind of just wipe out all of Edwin's options, unless he benches that other Well, that would win Hector the game, actually. Only oh, right, two yeah, prizes only two prizes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, even, even if that option is not available, he can still progress. And, Hector uh, has so much time. Down, yeah. That is one neat part about this Chen Pao deck is you are a two prize attacking deck, but mm -hmm. once your two prize option, your two prize attacker gets knocked out, you can like pretend to be a one prize deck for a while, lay low, set up the board so that you can finally end the game with Chen Pao yet again. Right. I will say too, I think I think the second vacuum thing does actually end up being slightly more relevant too when you're not playing Manaphy. Uh, right. It's just easier to make up for your comfies dying or just not getting your comfies in general and just getting more and more in the loss zone um, through other means as well. But it's just going to go for the lost impact here. That does also get Edwin to uh, 11 in the Lost Zone, so he can finally start Requiem and can Sableye now. This matchup feels really bad, though. Yeah. The Moonlight Shuriken just getting so much value. It's it's as if your opponent has the Canceling Cologne play every single game, every single time, <laughs> which we've talked about it before. In the interview, Jared said it's kind of a high roll to get it that early on, and here we are basically giving it to your opponent and gifting it over, and I think that puts Edwin in a really unfortunate spot. I think... If Edwin had known that this many players would bring Chen Pao, maybe he, he would have chosen differently and brought Manaphy in this deck. Yep, heavy ball coming down there for Hector. Just seeing the, the two the two balls chilling out in the prizes. Uh, nothing to grab for him. I didn't see what was grabbed off the Roxanne, but does have the B-Barrel online now, so he can draw a bunch of cards. It looks like a Cypher Maniac was played, which also kind of completely sidesteps this Roxanne and yeah. fixes anything. Uh, 
The fact that Cypher Maniacs grabs two cards, uh, and a lot of times, like, two cards is so much in Xi'an Pao. Like, that's a superior energy retrieval, and, like, a, you, you, like an S-Ball, right? Like, that's all you need to get 240 damage down super easily. Looks like Hector is choosing to grab the Barrel and Ultra Ball, I think, is what I saw. Makes sense, yeah. So using the B-Barrel, or even the Concealed Cards, to draw into those two cards, and then can just draw even more after that, and can probably get this knockout without too much trouble. Those draw an Iron Bundle as well. Iron Bundle, sometimes relevant, um, to just kind of gust around random things that your opponent has in play. Like, could you could technically Hyper Blower into Iron Hands if for some reason Champ House is not available. That's true. That would be um, a win condition here. So it does have multiple lines here to pursue. Again, just with the massive lead, just kind of how things have shaken out. Is going to play an Earthen Vessel. Looks like. Let's see what energies are grabbed here. It does still have concealed cards as available as well. But you generally want to sequence that later if you want to do your B barrels. B barrels. Looking at Edwin's hand, did get the boss off prizes at least, but kind of too little too late. Uh, and it's just going to come down to if Hector can probably win this turn. One other option that Hector has, if Hector doesn't have the win this turn specifically, could start attacking with that. Oh, he's got a hyper blower. Yeah, hyper blower. So either Hector can win the game now if that Iron Hands comes into play, or you have that second option of just taking a knockout with Baxcalibur as a, as a one prize option, and yep. one more hyper blower or or what have you could end the game that yep. way. We do see a lightning and two waters in the discard pile, so it's basically there if the Iron Hands is available for whatever reason. This needs superior and the Iron Hands. B barrel for five. Five straight cards. Up. Do we see it? And there's still Pokestop and Greninja remaining. I think it's vacuumed. Oh, okay. Pokestop. Sorry. The yeah, Pokestop yeah. is vacuumed. So Greninja remaining. Maybe could see another Pokestop. Maybe could see that Superior. Maybe could see an S Ball or Ultra Ball. But I think we're running a little bit low on the ball cards, given that two of them are prized. Right, right. With those two prized, it's, it's probably pretty tight. But maybe you just drew into it. I don't know. We'll see. Taking a knockout with Back Calibur doesn't feel too bad, I think. Yeah, for sure. Normally, in a normal standard situation, I think we're just going to pass, it seems. No superior, so no attack here. And I think right. that's okay. Yeah. You still have still you still have plenty of time. But again, yeah, no no, uh, no gust available anymore. Right. So that if that Tina doesn't come up, it's not going to come up at all uh, for the rest of this game. Unless somehow Edwin gets down to one prize before Hector uh, takes one more prize. So Edwin has to decide what to do here. Kind of got lucky there and didn't uh, end up immediately losing the game. Yes. And also didn't lose a prize at all. So... We'll see what he decides to do. He's going to switch card probably into the Comfy and start digging a little bit here. Oh, no, go back oh. into the Tina. I think I would have liked to see a Concealed Cards to try and grab Sableye because I think Sableye is a better attacker in this case. He's going to boss one B-Barrel. Uh, might have the second Roxanne maybe available. I don't see it. Yeah, I would have liked to see a Concealed Cards get rid of that Jet before before this play happened. And you can use this play as a backup play, of course, <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't see the Sableye, but... If you do draw into Sableye, you can then Psychic Energy and then switch your Cram and knock out a Barrel with a one prizer. And in this case, Hector is really close. I guess either way, you, you're giving your opponent an option to win the game right. in one attack. It's just a matter of Chen Pao versus, versus Iron Hands, right? So mm -hmm. I guess this play makes sense too. Just targeting down Hector's draw engine, making it as hard as possible to chain together this last attack for the game. Edwin probably hoping to draw into the last Roxanne next turn, maybe. Yeah, I... Do you know if it's two Chen Pao's in um, Hector's list? Let me check real quick. It does look like it's three Chen Pao. Three, okay. So they, they have to be in the deck, then. Uh, I don't think all three are we gone. We do see one discard. right now being okay. grabbed. And a superior. So I think Hector doesn't have it quite yet. Would need... More a little bit, just a little bit more mm -hmm. to get this knockout. Did bench it though, so so I think we're almost there. Yeah, there's the superior. Yep. And then if there's enough energy in the deck, then it is pretty much there. Yeah, just needs energy in the deck, and I think I saw a super rod. Super rod put back two. Uh, as long as there's one more energy in hand, because he used one to retreat. He already retreated, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Super yep. trill, hail blade, taking the last two. Hector cleaning up that one. Got a little bit scary at the end, but it did seem like Hector was in control for pretty right. much the, the most of the game. Yeah, uh, kind of rough draws there from Edwin. Mm -hmm. uh, losing all of his gusting options kind of took out any sort of easy 
early game kind of get ahead strategies like Prime Catcher, Lone Frigibax type stuff. Um, so now Edwin has a choice to switch. I don't remember what Edwin. Edwin's second deck is Zard. Yes. Hector's is Tina. So we're going to see um, that happen. Um, and before we get into that, I want to do one more quick thank you to one of our sponsors. Uh, Chicago Clash is brought to you by Cutter Tap. Cutter Tap has tons and tons of Pokemon TCG articles written by extremely skilled players. Their articles cover deck analysis, matchup descriptions, rogue decks, metagame discussion, high level theory, and more. Uh, Regional champion Piper Lapine recently put out an article on control from EUIC, or for EUIC, that I learned a lot from. Some cool list there, along with a different ranking of the, all the types of control going into EUIC. Uh, Michael Davidson, one of our competitors, wrote an in depth article on Chien Pao. I think he's also playing Chien Pao mm -hmm. today. Uh, so, if you're liking what you see here, what the Chien Pao is doing very well today so far, I think it's one basically every yes, game we've seen from it's it. Very good. Uh, you can definitely check out that article to learn more. If you're an Ancient Box lover, uh, Hunter Dravek just put out two whole articles on it, going super in depth on not just the deck, but its, it's matchups as well. You can check out all these articles and more over at CutterTap.com. Thank you again for sponsoring this event. And if you want to support the event in general, uh, you can also go to our prize pool. It's, I think it's just estimation point prize pool in the chat. Uh, we are doing a crowdfunded prize pool thing, so if you want to support the event want to see more like it, please be sure to contribute. Even like a small $5 thing, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you donate at least – or if you contribute at least $5, I will personally thank you at the end of the broadcast. I'll thank everyone who contributed at least that amount. So. Please do that. Please support independent Pokemon TCG events. I want to do more stuff like this. I want to make sure there's enough interest in it. Um, yeah, we're going to see Giratina now on the other side, and maybe mm -hmm. Giratina also on Edwin's side, unless he switches. Yes. So it could be Giratina versus Zard, or it could be the Giratina Mirror. Yeah, and either way, this seems kind of dicey for Edwin now, because even if he does win the Giratina Mirror, he has to go up against Giratina with Iron Leaves yeah. versus Zard. Yeah, it's tough. I think... I'm not sure what I would do as Edwin. I guess because you have side selection, you want to choose the deck that the side matters more for. And I'm not actually sure if it's Mirror or Zard in that case. <laughs> both, uh, you you kind of want to go to second as both in this, right, in this case. Right. So we'll see what Edwin d decides to do once we get word that the competitors are ready. Yeah, and looking at... Um... The, the Tina list, it seems very similar to what Edwin was playing. Very little difference. There is a Manaphy, though, which is actually right. relevant in the mirror. It is. Uh, and could be a huge, huge change here. and well, Or huge turning point, depending on if Edwin does decide to go with the mirror matchup here for his second game. Um, but yeah, in general, what are, you, what are you thinking about Giratina in this new format? I think it depends on how much you respect Chen Pao. Mm -hmm. it, it ended up being not so great of a play in today's meta, specifically. But like I was saying before, I think Tina has been doing well online. Yeah. And... I've heard from some of my coaching students that juniors and seniors typically haven't been playing Chan Pao in mo most recent regionals. So if any of you viewers out there are in those divisions, it might make sense to consider Tina for EUIC because of the lack of, of Chen Pao. Right. So if you aren't worried about the Chen Pao matchup, if you aren't worried about the Lugia matchup, I think, I, get, I think Tina has great matchups pretty much across the board other than those two, especially mm -hmm. the Zard matchup. Before the like you were saying before the Zard matchup was pretty winnable as it was in the previous format, and now you have Iron Leaves on top of that as another KO option. So you basically have two blow up options. All right, and we're gonna go go to game number two. It looks like it's gonna be Lost Zone the versus Tina Lost Zone. Mirror. Very exciting stuff. Uh, Hector just doing the attach pass here gives Edwin a little bit of chance here. But again, these mm -hmm. these kind of starts are not as bad as they used to be. Yes. For Lost Zone decks in general, because now there's no more VIP pass. You can just Hector just top decks Buddy Poffin and can start playing right. the game, isn't too far behind. Uh, and we'll see how Edwin can capitalize here. Did at least start the Colress, so it does have a lot of cards at his disposal. Let's see what he decides to grab here. It does have, let's see, I believe, was that two Nest Balls? I saw two about? Nests and two Jets yeah. in the Colress choice. So it looks like Edwin is thinking about Lost Hunting the Psychic and the Jet, grabbing the two Nest Balls and the Jet, and probably just going to go for an Abyss Seeking this turn. Makes sense. Uh, Abyss Seeking, a very powerful tool that uh, the normal Lost Zone variants don't have access to. Right. And it's something that I'm sure Hector would have loved to have been able to do last turn, but couldn't <sighs> do that. Lost and Zone is a risk. I mean, Edwin did Lost on his Psychic Energy already, so maybe feeling the pressure of whittling down those resources, but sure. you have to chorus turn up to turn if you want to keep up the pace, and I don't know if this will come back to bite him or not, but finding those choruses can be so hard otherwise if you don't grab es especially them. Especially in Mirror, where you're just 
the the odds of Roxanne into Roxanne into Roxanne are pretty high. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be really careful because once those Roxannes come down, even if you, you're like, oh, I have like two chorus in hand, I can just own this one. It's fine. That your hand's not going to last very long once your prizes get down, and that kind of adds another layer too, where you have to be really careful in this match about when you go down two of those three prize cards when you get into that Roxanne territory. Uh, be interesting to see how these skilled Tina players kind of play around that. It looks like oh, I see the I, I see what happened. So Edwin, historically Tina always used to play more psychic energy than grass, right? Because you have Sableye as your backup attacker, so mm -hmm. it made sense to to play four psychic and three grass maybe. But in this case, because Iron Leaves is in the deck, Edwin actually choosing to play four grass, three psychic, uh... and because there's only three psychic in the deck, Edwin had already lost on one. If you lost on the other, that means there's only one left in the deck, so that can get pretty iffy if you use one psychic energy on your Tina, for example. Right. Now you can't save live for the rest of the game until that Tina gets KO'd or you retreat or, or super rod or what you have you. Lost impact you can't too. lost impact Yeah, you can't lost impact and, and lost in that energy. So Edwin heavily prioritizing that psychic means that there's no chorus left in the hand. We'll see if he's able to draw into another one. Did flower, or, uh, concealed into both Comfe and a jet energy, so can get the ball rolling more here and can get the Cramorant attack damage. Uh, looks like he's eyeing that up as well. 110 on Giratina, pretty useful for a lot of reasons. Uh, one thing to kind of note, too, is that 110 plus a Prism Edge also knocks out Giratina, V-Star. Uh, I'm not sure how relevant that is. Also, I don't know if we mentioned the ability for Iron Leaves. But basically, you play it, bunch of energy, you can move around uh, onto it and just attack with it. One shot goes to RDXs. And yeah, 180 damage out of nowhere is still pretty good in general. I'm going to be honest. I do not know how to pronounce that ability. Is it Ra Rapid Vernier? Vernier? For, for, for producers, Vern if, you know, if you know, if you know, feel free to whisper. I don't, I don't think it's Vernier. Into I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say it's Ver, Ver, It's not Vernier, right? <laughs> I, I don't there. know. It could be any. <laughs> uh, looking like thinking about playing that Comfe down. I do like this 110 play though from Edwin here because. Like you mentioned, I guess one option is 110 into 180 to knock out a V-Star, but mm -hmm. I think what Edwin is really going for here is saying, hey, Hector, you didn't loss on anything last turn, so you probably have to Abyss Seeking, and if you're going to Abyss Seeking, I'm going to take a free two prize right. from my cram. I think that's basically yeah. the line that Edwin if, is, if is aiming for. If you can't do like Jet Giratina V on another yeah. one, then that causes problems. And even if you do that, if you don't evolve that, then that could be a Sableye target for next turn. Edwin that's got true. all the way to 5, which is pretty easy to get to, to, to 10 on the following turn unless does not have a chorus in hand, but... Hector, getting to play the game at least a little bit, did have the Colress, was able to rip that off. Uh, is going to play Switch Cart. It's Vernier. We're, we're getting word that it's Vernier. That, Vernier. that makes sense. That's, uh, that's what that looks Rapid like. Vernier. Rapid Vernier. What does it mean, though? I don't know. I don't know. Producers, I'll tell us up. what that means. <laughs> um, Thank you. See, that Switch Cart actually... <laughs> they said no idea. Um, Switch Cart actually really relevant here. Healing up that damage, uh, allowing you to get all the way down to 80 damage counters instead of 110. Right. Kind of fixes a lot of sure. random math. Uh, takes away that Rapid Vernier Prism Edge option <laughs> from Iron Leaves. <laughs> takes away uh, the, the play you mentioned uh, with just two Cramorant Spits. And can now actually safely do it unless Giratina Shred comes down. Another Giratina V coming down for Hector. Did have to zone two gates already. Oh, man. How bad were, how bad were those selects? <laughs> I did not. I wasn't able to see the exact hands. Edwin having to loss on a chorus. Hector having to loss on two gates. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to tell the competitors to uh, try to play their hands higher up going forward, so you can try to see a little bit better. Because uh, we can see Edwin's hand decently well, but yeah, he's just gonna have to promote it, and he's just gonna have to abyss seeking here. At least the switch cart though came into action, making it a little bit more awkward for Edwin to really do anything. You can put more one ten more, and you can clean it up later with the save lie, but it's not great. Ooh, but we do have boss Ooh. hand. So it's one... going to get rid of it uh, with the abyss seeking. So I see. Yeah, okay. Hector gets rid of boss with abyss seeking, and then Edwin also has boss of his own. Okay. So actually choosing to play Colrus though this turn to kind of accelerate the loss zone and maybe get a Tina set up. But one option Edwin could have done if if he so choosed was to boss up Lone Comfy and try and target down Hector's draw power, mm -hmm. but instead going with the Colrest to set up his own board, because I think there's no Tina's right now. Right, right. Let's see. Looks like going to zone a Nest Ball into water. Again, the one water, once it gets yeah. zoned, that takes out that play completely. Edwin only plays two water, so... Yeah, now, Hector does play the Manaphy, so uh, if, if Hector's actually worried about it, can just play that whenever, but might not be inclined to anymore once that water hits the Lost Zone. And... 
yeah, it looks like Hector did take a Buddy Poffin. I think the other card was a Psychic Energy, so he chose those two over the boss on the jet. So at least can get some Comfes out next turn, or even that Mana Fee with the Comfe. Uh, now we're going to be at six. Is that seven? Yeah, seven loss zone now for Edwin. Did have to zone a gate with the water, but can actually charge things up now. Can take that Shred KO on the opponent's Giratina V star, or Giratina V. We'll see if what he decides to do here. So Edwin not playing the Mana Fee and only playing two water means that both of those options are no longer possible. You mm -hmm. can't Mana Fee to protect your bench, and you can't go on the aggressive and Moonlight Shuriken on your own. So Hector, I think, even though Hector had the slower start not attacking besides using that Abyss Seeking, I think Hector is still advantaged. I think he still is because of the possibility of Moonlight Shuriken. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess Edwin is playing around this and saying, I'm only going to bench one Comfy, right. and you can't do anything about it. So that's currently where we are right now. Yeah, I think we are going to see that Shred knockout here. Does have the gate in hand. Oh, it's just going to spit. Okay. Taking the safer, slower approach here. You can always clean that up later pretty easily mm -hmm. with Sableye, so not the end of the world. And yeah, that, uh, that Giratina V hanging on by a thread has like 30 HP left, I believe, at this point. Hector drawn. Yeah, and Hector, like Lost Zone looking pretty good, can do some damage this turn, potentially. Uh... Both players playing the Prime Catcher, if we didn't already mention that. So if that gets drawn into at some point, can just quickly snipe a Giratina V, potentially. Um, going to go ahead and I believe that's the Buddy Poffin. He's going to play the, the, the Comfey down. We'll see if Hector still decides to bench the man if, he is, if, if, uh, if he's worried about that at all. Something we mentioned a couple times now is that our players don't know Deckless mm -hmm. for sure. So Hector seeing this one water energy in the Lost Zone means... I mean, Hector knows that at least one is lost on, but doesn't know if Edwin plays two or three water energy in total. So right. we could see the Mana Fee come down here still. He's just going to grab the two Comfe with the Buddy Poffin. Hector is playing as if he knows that this Moonlight Shuriken is not an option anymore. <laughs> and I don't I mean, know if he does. He e might. Even if he doesn't know, he knows it's unreasonable right, right now. Right, that's true. Uh, with uh, Especially with the gate being zoned too, just makes things even worse. I guess we didn't mention that Radiant Greninja is prized for Hector, though. <laughs> it is prized. That is true, yeah. So it could come in to grab the last two, but I, right now Edwin's playing around it. We're going to see some flower select things come down here with that jet energy switch. And the water is going to lean towards getting rid of the water, uh, especially because, like you said, mm -hmm. Greninja prize. Don't really need it. You don't know when you're going to get that off prizes. You do have the heavy... No, you don't have to play heavy ball. Yeah, Tina, usually yeah. Tina doesn't play heavy ball. It's going to switch cart into the other Comfe. More flower selectants coming down. There's the prime, prime catcher. catcher. That can be very, very relevant here. Just an item gust card. Switching in anything you want. And also switching one of your Pokemon, which is actually pretty relevant with a deck like Lost Zone, where right. uh, it saves you a switch card sometimes. Uh, and sometimes it's your only way to get something into the active, which never feels great. But it is an option there. So yeah, the option for uh, Hector to take a knockout on the Giratina is there. And again, very... You have to be very cautious when you play this matchup. You want to play around the Roxanne as hard as possible, mm -hmm. as carefully as possible. So when in, when you take what amount of prizes is super important, and you have to consider it constantly. So we see Hector grabbing the Cram over a Nest Ball, going up to 8. So could potentially Cram the Cram or Prime Catcher into the Tina V. Those are the two options presented to Hector right now. I'm assuming the Cram play is fine. I think <clears> that's <throat> probably what we're going to see here, but... Both are still certainly options, depending on what Hector's hand is like. Oh, is going to go for the Prime Catcher on the Comfey and knock that out. Uh, interesting play. I mean, it makes sense. You uh, you know, there's there's you're, you're how do I say? That? I guess you're I guess as Edwin, you're scared to put down more Comfey because you know True. you don't have the Mana Fee. Right. And Hector has a pretty good idea that there is no Mana Fee because of the last game. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would have been probably played, right? Yes. So it's just kind of going for that, applying even more pressure and just reducing the amount of dig here. And yeah, uh, just gonna see, gonna go for the Mirage Gate here for Edwin. Evolved up Giratina V Star is gonna slap down the Grass and the Psychic on it. And yeah, I don't know what the best play here for Edwin is. The best play would have been to save Light Attack this turn, but I think this gate coming down onto the Giratina V star meant that it's not possible. Right. I think we've seen, did we see both vacuums already? Maybe just one. I think just one. But either way, I think this indicates that Edwin, that wasn't really an option for mm -hmm. Edwin. 
You do see a chorus, though, before the gate came down. So maybe if there was another vacuum, maybe we would like to see the chorus happen before the gate in case you wanted to attack with Sableye. I think we're getting a boss's orders here. I think Edwin was eyeing that up. Probably just sniping the other guy. Okay. Be. Yeah, that makes sense then. And yeah, this uh, so what is on the Giratina V one ninety? So nine, yeah. If you're able to save a light this turn, obviously very good. You can take mm -hmm. three presses, but that also immediately puts you into Roxanne. So you have to, you can set up damage yeah, to what, try to only. What take I would two. probably do yeah. is you'd knock out the Tina V and then spread damage to the other comfies right. and and wait. But instead, I'm thinking about pre benching the save. Oh, probably could have gotten it then. Yeah, probably. Uh, no, loss zone is the issue. But he had Chorus, so it would have it would have required another comfy to bench, but. He benched it anyways, interestingly enough. Interesting decisions here. Is going to get that loss in back down. And now up to nine in the loss zone. And that is uh, two prizes for Edwin here. And yeah, if Hector can't evolve that Giratina V, I believe he zoned a V-Star, like the first flower selecting of the game too. So if he can't get one of those, then Edwin can go down to one prize yeah. and kind of skip a lot of the Roxanne fear turns. That's true. Hector needs to evolve this pretty badly. Right. And Did he get the chorus off that flower or something, so probably gonna hit it here. Let's see what he grabs. Counter catcher, switch, save like Horus. Big one. There's not, no that was not it. V star. Is it in hand? We haven't seen oh there there is a Garatina V star in there. A okay. golden one. So that's the one he just grabbed. I didn't know what it looked like, honestly. Yeah, I, don't know what the it, it, like. <laughs> I could barely tell, but at the end he flashed it and it is it is the first card that he is choosing to grab here. I think just you don't really want to go down to three prizes, but I think dealing with this Caratina V-Star is maybe your best option. Mm -hmm. It does take away, uh, basically, Edwin's only answer for Giratina V-Star, at least an immediate yeah. answer. Um, although, this, if, this one if, is he, pretty if he doesn't mention another V, mm -hmm. then it's uh, this is kind of weird. We'll see what Hector's able to do. Uh, ideally, this turn is more than just lost impact, return knockout, or even start with him. I think, I think what you would want to do is... You'd want to set up a backup attacker so exactly, that even if you yeah. do get Roxanne, you can just cram or save lie at the next turn. Does have the cram ready at least, but you probably want a little bit more than that going for you. Is still deciding that Colrest is going to take the Gutina of Restar, of course. And he's thinking about the other ones. Does one probably. Debating that counter catcher too. Something to note here is that we are running low on time. So yeah. if, if Edwin does win this game. I don't know if they're able to. They're going oh, to be he's able zoning. To, oh, lost in the Garatina V Star and the Counter Catcher. Wow. So I, I I'm not sure if if Edwin's able to pull this one out and go one and one on the set. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to finish a game. Right, three. right. Yeah, this might be. Uh, actually, the, I don't think there's been any time. Yeah, so there far. hasn't. Not yet. Yeah. If. Uh, if okay, oh, he did have already a, a Garatina okay, V Star. That makes sense. Hand. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, if people haven't noticed, this is more time allowed than a typical Pokemon tournament. Usually, it's 50 minute rounds. We're doing 60 minutes uh, just to give people one. Reduce the amount of ties, but also because people are searching decks, mm -hmm. gives them a couple extra minutes to make sure that's all set up and good to go. Uh, 60 minutes is a very comfortable amount, I feel, for a lot of best of threes. Even are we th including three turns after 60 minutes still? Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah so there's still sense. three turns after 60 minutes, so that might be relevant here. Right. Um, yeah, all these games are concluding in time, which has uh, been great so far. We are not horribly behind schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and is just going to loss impact. Does it get to 10 to the loss zone? No problem. Now, does Edwin have a Roxanne? That is the question here. Thankfully, Hector's board is set up to deal with the Roxanne. Three comfies, ready to go. One right. cram as a backup attacker, which is not bad. And and did take the Colrus off of okay. that other Colrus. So making sure not to zone them too yeah, willy-nilly. Yeah, yeah. Is starting off? I think is, is we see the Roxanne yeah, the, okay. on the bottom here for Edwin. You do have to also find Tina's, though. You need to kind of set up. Like, yeah, cram for this turn is enough, but you sure. also need something for next turn as well. Yeah, because then it's just cram, knockout, return, yes. and then Hector doesn't even need to, like, promote a comfy, really. If they, after yes, the Roxanne, you just correct. print the cram around and just go and still be happy with that turn. Buy himself time, get a prize card, too. And the prize card would be the Greninja, right. which would be pretty relevant, pretty helpful for breaking this Roxanne. Is going to start with flower a flower. first before Roxanne. Interesting. Jet and Tina. Definitely. Oh, I thought I thought for sure <laughs> everyone would the Tina to bench it. But no, just going to grab the Jet instead. Mm -hmm. Does have the Sableye. Uh, can potentially set up some damage, too, if Edwin does not want to open himself up uh, to the Roxanne. But then you're just leaving the Giratina kind of there to keep the any tactics. But, I mean, if it's fine, it's, if he keeps attacking at this point, right? Yeah. So maybe Sableye just set up damage is 
better. But you did just Roxanne them, so the other them getting rocks. If uh, Hector getting Roxanne, not great. That is true. I think. I think I would just like to see. I think I would have liked to see the Garrison of V bench this turn, to be mm -hmm. honest, over the jet. Take the Garrison of V, bench it, play the Roxanne, maybe attach that Grass Energy to the Comfy so you can retreat it for sure, guaranteed, into that Cram. Gonna play a second Poff and just to thin those out of the deck. It's actually right. jetting up the Cram. So there's just gonna be a Cram hit there I, then. I, I don't... And the Roxanne? I, you, yes, you jetted the Cram, and you got to save your Grass Energy, but you... Now it's gonna be hard to find another Garatina, so... Right. Uh, yeah, also important to note that Edwin did loss on one of the Psychics. That turn That's true. Two, off the uh, the loss. So there's so. only one. Oh wait, there, is there another? There should be. There should still be there two. Should, there should still. I don't think he lost on one early in the was game. Was that this game? Yeah, this game. I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's so scary. Then. <laughs> so there's only one. <laughs> that left. might be why he went for the Kramer at play in particular then too. Uh, but yeah, I think Sableye was probably still probably a better option. But yeah, bench of the Giratina would have been would have been nice for sure. Just to have more options for future turns. But we'll see what Hector uh, if if. Hector might get stuck here in any sense. We'll see. We see Cross Energy Super Rod. That Iron Leaves hitting the hand as well, along with a Vacuum. Vacuum not too useful anymore in this game, but Edwin going to go down to two prizes of Super Rodding first, maybe, in case of Hector's response, Roxanne. Okay, so... There's still two psychics. Okay, so maybe so I was just confused. Yeah, I think I think that was the pre that previous. That might have been the game. previous game. Okay, two uh, psychics going but back. But yeah, that means that's deck. why Sableye wasn't even an option then because they were all in the discard pile right. too. Yeah, it's gonna go ahead and gate. Probably just load up the Comfe or just getting the one energy. Okay, thinking about it. Ah, oh, this is a very tense situation. Very dependent on what Hector drew here. I'm trying to get a look, but keeps hiding it from us. Edwin is running out of resources, for right. sure. Slowly but surely, running out of attackers. Hector might not even have to take three prizes to win the game. If Hector can deal with this Sableye and this Cramorant, that might be enough to mm -hmm. seal it up, because I mean, what will Edwin attack with after that? I'm not sure quite yet. Iron Leaves could be an option. Iron Leaves is a very valid option, yeah. That might be why he attached it to that Greninja too, because uh, the, the Rapid Vernier ability <laughs> allowing you to just move the energy from any of your pokemon so it doesn't matter where it is and uh worst case can use it as a pivot too. we're actually seeing the retreat come into play oh is going for it did want to go for that play then yeah and we're going to lost mine and i don't know where the damage was i think it had to be 90 on the tina v star and then one 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 on the three comfies Looks... i think it... oh no he's going to keep the tina alive nope or is not <laughs> Knockout one one one. I think is I think okay. is the case. I think honestly, yeah, with the Roxanne, I would I probably would have liked to keep Tina alive, honestly. But this makes sense because now you can end. I guess if you just put a bunch of damage on the Tina V star, you could end the game anyways, right? Right. Because yeah, now Hector can kind of freely dig here as much as he wants. Uh, Tina's not act, uh, not True. trapped at all. So you just put a bunch of damage on the Tina V star, and then you just put the rest. You put like eighty on the Tina V star instead of ninety, and then put. Like two one one. Yeah, anything like that. If you desperately want to get a prize card, you could take a prize if you want to, but it's not super required. He's gonna bench the Giratina V, attach the water energy, and he's gonna Roxanne back. Did get the the counter Roxanne off here. I'm not sure if that was off like a flower selecting. It might have gotten it off that. I'm not sure. The downside of that Tina play, now that I think about it, is if you leave Tina with 10 and you put 2-1-1 one, one on Comfies, if Hector hits Switch Cart on the Comfy with 2, you can't end the game with 1 loss right, mine anymore. Right, yeah. So you need 6-6 six, six for the 2 Comfies plus 1 on the Tina, so that's 1 damage short Yeah. if Hector were to hit Switch Cart. But this way, Hector has to hit 2 Switch Carts for loss mine not to be a win condition. Yeah. That being said, though, the Sableye's going to get knocked out, so maybe even if the, the Comfies stay damaged, it might still be fine mm -hmm. that, that these Comfies are damaged. Especially with the Roxanne making it so hard. You oh. see it. <laughs> Finding the Colrus. The classic Roxanne just not working and doing anything in this matchup. Letting your opponent still getting a Roxanne off, and then you getting Roxanne to Colrus. No big deal. That being said, though, even though Edwin draws to the Colrus, he still weighs away yeah. from attacking with Sableye again. You need to Super Rod. You need to find your Nest Ball. You need to find your Gate or Psychic Energy. It's hard. That's it's hard. a lot, yeah. Sableye, I'm not sure how many rods are left either. Unfortunately for Lost Box Enjoyers, Sableye has just 10 too much HP for Poffin to I grab know, it. it's tragic. <laughs> it would feel so good if Poffin could grab Sableye, but alas, it cannot. And unlike Garatina builds of the olden days, 
they're only playing one save light now, mm-hmm. so you can't chain the save lights back to back anymore like you used to be able right. to. All right. Thinking about the plays here. It's coming down to the wire. It's still anyone's yeah, game. This is, this is a, such a tough spot. He's going to grab the mana fee to prevent any uh, Moonlight Shuriken shenanigans. But, again, Hector doesn't know. Yes. He's not aware that there is no more water energy to get the playoff. You need two water energy. Might have done it, uh, especially because the grass energy did go down on the Greninja. Like, oh, I might as well That's just true. be careful. It's one less energy for them to worry about, even though the grass doesn't actually matter for, like, saving gates or anything. I think these comfies being on the board and damage already means that there's really no downside to benching this mana fee. Yep. The only downside, I guess, is if you draw into this Greninja off the prizes and then your opponent doesn't take any prizes. But I don't think that will be the case. I think Edwin will probably take at least one with a Cramorant right next turn. Rod and water here. If he zones the water, I'm pretty sure he's locked out of any Shuriken, so is going to take that water. Uh, and again, does get the Greninja off prizes this next turn. Doesn't yes. know it yet, but does. Does heal up the 10 damage with the switch cart, so there's one healed Comfe. I'm not sure how many switch carts are left. I know one was used on the Kiratina V mm-hmm. earlier. It looks like we're just getting a spit innocently for one KO, one prize card. Now we'll see if Edwin can piece together two Edwin, prizes this turn. Edwin thinking about either Comfy or Cram here actually draws in the switch card, so rewarded for the play of, of leading this Comfe. Mm-hmm. The attack is still guaranteed for Edwin here. Edwin, can they get a win this turn? Nest Ball, Gates, but no Super Rod. So close, close to being able to win in that chorus alone, but not quite. Goodbye, Iron Leaves. <laughs> we will we'll wrap it Vernier later today, maybe. <laughs> maybe one of these days. Maybe, maybe one, one of these, these days. Uh, but yeah, honestly, Cramped the KO, totally fine. Still progresses him towards some sort of win condition here. Flower selecting going down. Super Rod. <laughs> Wait, is that that's it? it. I think that's it, right? Switch cart? Yeah. Super wow. Rod. Has it all. Mirage Gate, Nest Ball, Switch cart. Oh my gosh. All right. And that's the- two prizes. It looks like, uh, yeah, Edwin's just going to sequence it out really quickly here. Roxanne, perfectly. The least finding. useful card <laughs> of all time. Perfectly finding exactly what Edwin needs. And Hector just going to scoop it up with only nine and a half minutes remaining in this set. I don't know if they'll be able to finish, but they're yeah. going to try. Well, if uh, there's ever a, a match where one side can get donked, it's yes. probably this match. <laughs> That's true. Uh, if a donk happens, it can definitely happen. But otherwise, we'll uh, we'll see. I know, um, so what is it now? It's Giratina versus... So Edwin uh, just won. So Ed- Edwin has to switch to Zard. Ooh, yeah, that's tough. That's and, uh, well, tough to finish, too. It is tough to finish. Hector will probably choose second. Mm-hmm. So if Edwin has a bad start, we've seen Zard get dunked before already mm-hmm. today, so it could happen, but I think it'll have to be a very quick win right. if one of these players wants to walk away with with a victory. And I, I guess, I mean, we haven't talked about it much. We haven't talked about it with the competitors, but in, in theory, they could gentlemen's too. Sure. Um, and make an agreement based off of prizes or something along yep. those lines if they feel like they can't tie. But at this point in the tournament, I it's, think a tie is okay. Yeah. I think 3 one one, three one, one sounds good. Yeah. 3 one one, I think I would say you're likely to move on right. at 3 one one. I think so too. Um, and yeah, we, we just are now looking at um, Edwin Zard list. Seems pretty normal. A lot of normal stuff there. Uh, very similar to Jake's list, honestly. Yeah. Uh, unsurprising because they test a lot together. <laughs> so, Turo, Palpad, Airy. Yep. A lot of the same stuff. And then, yeah, we're going to see this. Uh... Oh, one thing that's actually relevant in this matchup now is Hector is playing the Spirit Tomb. Mm-hmm. That could matter. Which can matter if the game actually has time to finish right. to some degree. Because with Spirit Tomb's Fettered and Misfortune ability, you're blocking off the Rotom V's draw engine, the instant charge, to draw three cards every turn. That's a big way that Charizard actually maintains itself as a consistent deck that can actually set up effectively. Because you need so many pieces all yes, the time just to actually set up your board. Pidgeot DX, Charizard DX, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, with Iron Leaves, this matchup seems very tough. And yeah, the kind of extra setup time if I'm to switch decks here too, adding a little bit of extra time makes it hard to finish within six minutes, even though they do get the, the three turns after time. We'll see. If both players are playing fast, it's still possible to finish a full game, but it'll be difficult for sure. Yep. So, um, other than that, yeah, the Zart is playing Airy, which can be relevant in this matchup mm-hmm. if it's well-timed. Can be pretty good. Turo to heal up stuff potentially as well. Uh, but this, the odds of needing to heal anything are pretty low with Iron Leaves also existing as a one-shot KO option. You have two blow-up options now in this Tina deck. You have, of course, the Star Requiem and the Prism Edge from the Iron Leaves. And 
Um, for those at home, I'm, I'm sure most of you know this already, but Charizard, even though it is canonically a fire type Pokemon, a fire flying type Pokemon <laughs> who is extremely resistant to grass attacks. Mm -hmm. The Charizard in question here is a Terra dark type Charizard who is weak to grass. So right. the, the Iron Leaves will get the one shot as we head into our game. Edwin going first, as we expect. Hector taking second, starting maybe the worst starter in the game. Yes. Radiant Charizard. Awful, awful <laughs> starter. But uh, the main problem is that its retreat cost is three. You need three energy on it to retreat which you're basically never going to get. So you mm -hmm. have to, typically you have to burn your Arvin slot on a switch card. Right. Uh, or at least Turo does exist here, but you can't afford to Turo in these Usually early turns not. unless you have a perfect hand. So regardless, Zard's not getting, or Radiant Charizard's not getting donked. That's true. So the game will go on to some degree. We've got six minutes left on the clock. We'll see what these players are able to make of it and is able to at least Rotom for this turn. But uh, we'll see. We'll Does see have the Ultra ball. ball here just to get a Charmander down. I think so. This is the area in hand already, too. And two bosses, so we might just see an area come down. Just to have something to play yeah. next turn. Two boss and area, so it's going to come down to how good this instant charge is mm -hmm. for Edwin. Spirit Tomb coming down. If this instant charge is bad and Hector is able to find that Spirit Tomb, it could mean that Hector has the time to win in time, potentially. We'll see, though. I think something interesting to note about this Radiant Charger start is that even though it's normally a bad starter, in the event that Edwin is just trying to tie this game and not finish, it's actually a pretty decent one yeah. because <laughs> your best attacker on turn one as Tina is Cramorant with that Spit Innocently attack. And normally you would be able to knock out a 160 HP fire type Pokemon, but Spit Innocently, this attack's damage isn't affected by weakness. So yeah. not quite enough to knock out a Radiant Charizard, unfortunately. Hector playing faster. Colrest into instantly dropping that Mirage Gate and that Grass Energy. Uh, yeah, oh, kind of worked out because otherwise, if he if he took the Mirage Gate, it was probably getting area next turn. Yeah, so, true. Uh, Spirit Tomb coming Spirit down. Spirit Tomb like immediately coming down. It is kind of too late though. If uh, Edwin depends did on get the good hand. cards yeah, there, depends yeah, depending on, on what happened. But I mean, his hand wasn't that good in the first place, so it might actually be pretty good here. And is going to do we have try to spit? Needs one more in the loss zone. Just going to maybe pass with the Cramorant. Double Cram Second coming cram. down. Interesting enough, yeah, using not get just it. using just using this cram to save the comfy in right. case Edwin is able to find the attack this turn. I guess is the option here for mm -hmm. Hector, but there's just not enough time I think to close out the game now that Edwin has found multiple basic Pokemon. In this case, I, I mean I can't. I don't think Hector did anything wrong last game either because it came down to Edwin finding like the perfect cards off of that Roxanne. Yeah, ridiculous. Having the chorus good, yeah. off of the two cards and then chorusing into flower selecting into finding Super Rod and Esbal Gate. So Hector didn't burn much time like not scooping early. You couldn't have scooped any, any earlier turn than that. Mm -hmm. So it might just be a natural tie in this case with only four minutes remaining. Edwin playing at a normal speed, but... Not playing extremely fast, I means that... Yeah, I mean, there's too many Pokemon down. There's yeah. no way at this there's point. So uh, many. Does play the Iano. Inst uh, must have drawn it off the Instant Charge or the Top Deck, so... Does get some new cards, doesn't get anything super useful there, but at least gets a lot of those supporters that aren't really relevant out of the way for now. Was able to get more on the bench, and uh, in could potentially have a good turn next turn. It's tough, though, because now, yeah, there's Luminion in hand. Can't use that because of Spear 2. Mm -hmm. Can't instant charge. Uh, kind of needs to get a lot of stuff going soon. If there was more time in this game, I think this would be a great position for Hector. But Right. Prime, Prime Catcher, Catcher and something can, else. I guess Prime Catcher is good. You take it, knock out Pidgey. That's mm -hmm. probably the play I would do. It does free up the, uh, the Zard problem, though. Right now, yes, Radiant Zard is stuck in the active and does force Edwin to get another switch out, which is pretty scary. Oh, but it's Iron Leaves versus oh, Prime wow, Catcher. Yeah. Just thinking he's he's not going to need it. It's not going to be relevant in this matchup. It is a tough call because Prime Catcher is so good and Iron Leaves is also so good in this matchup. Right. Definitely understandable. It's just going to go for it. Mm -hmm. That will free up the active slot for Edwin. But yeah, losing out on your quick searches... Really hard to get the down going forward, especially because Sableye is coming online right. next turn. So it's going to take the Cramorant Spit on it, take a prize card. And now we'll see what Edwin can do here. I don't think there's anything super good in hand before the top deck. Yeah. So Lumineon can't, can't. going to bench it, but can't because of Spirit Tomb. <sighs> and actually, this Lumineon just going to sit there on the bench. Yep. I think in this case, Edwin... It's so unfavored, it, it, but it has yeah, so he, much he was time. He so stuck anyway. Like, yeah. it really, it's not going to end up actually mattering. 
Uh, we're just going to Ayano into two Zard, two Candy. <laughs> Zard? Oh, there's a Zard. Candy. There's a Candy. Can Spirit at least Tomb. take some prizes. Spirit Tomb is not Path to the Peak, so you can use this what, what is it called? My mind is burning. Infernal, Infernal Rain. Rain. <laughs> of course, yes. Can use this Infernal Rain to search the deck for fire energy, not choosing to do so, already having that energy in hand. Edwin can shuffle up and attack, start the game off right, and this is kind of an awkward game. I I would say that Hector, if we were to play it out, Hector would still be a little bit advan advantaged, but mm -hmm. not by a whole lot, now that the Iron Leaves is gone, I would say. Right, right, right. Yeah, the Iron Leaves gone is... Uh... Pretty relevant here mm -hmm. if Hector can't string together a strong turn. Is going to counter capture the, the lone Comfe. Starts swinging on it. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, if if Choice Belt was available, could have cleaned up the Tina and actually put himself in a really strong position going forward. Right. But was not able to get the perfect Iano there. So we see Hector take his turn. I'm not aware of the competitors are aware of exactly how much time is remaining on the clock. Right. But I think they're probably... They Vaguely probably have aware. a sense yes. <laughs> of, of knowing that... Both are up. Only the one prize card. Taking more prizes here is tough, but Hector's turn was pretty fast. It Just was. did the one thing. And there is enough prizes on board where the choice belt is grabbed. Edwin can win three turns. Um, That's true. So... <laughs> technically possible. It seems like that Iona did good damage to Hector that turn. Right. So we did 110. Hector, though, only at five prizes, meaning... Hector needs two, sorry, three turns to finish the game and will only get two, most likely. In All right, this Edwin went fast. So Hector's uh, probably going to be turn zero here. Yeah. Going in time. For those not familiar with time rules, basically there are three turns after game concludes. The way it works is the current player's turn is turn zero, and then there's turn one for Edwin, turn two for Hector, and then turn three for Edwin. So effectively when time is called, you have at least two turns, but one of your turns is kind of like a half turn because you're already undergoing right. it. Um, so here's turn zero now for Hector. Yeah, all Hector has to do is evolve up those Giratinas and not take prizes to force a tie. Yeah. I think that's probably what Hector will do in this case. Right. Setting up this Comfe. And even if you don't evolve the Giratinas, just like setting up one prizers in this case might be enough because Edwin doesn't have Pidgeot to find those, those bosses. Yeah, could have played a Pidgeot last turn. Decided to Ultra Ball the Pidgeot away. Or the Pidgey away, sorry. Could have played mm -hmm. the Pidgey last turn. Decided Ultra Ball hand must have not been too great otherwise, and is prioritizing the Charmander to get that ready to go. And he's going to shred here for 160. Uh, this... Yeah, if that doesn't evolve, this can actually... Yeah, this does give Edwin a potential win condition, a slight wow. win condition. That's going to be turn but one now for Edwin. I don't think there's a tool in hand, so... I think this Tina is safe, which does mean... Yeah, didn't get the Arvin either. No Seal Stone, even though you have those two Vs in play. Very unfortunate. Yeah, if Spirit Tomb wasn't down, Spirit, uh, Lumineon could have grabbed something useful earlier. It would have been great. Uh, but yeah, this is probably just going to be a tie then. Going on over to Hector. Turn two now. Yep, turn two now. I wonder... I assume that they didn't do any sort of gentleman's agreement before before this match, but right. if we get word of that, we will tell you, the audience, as soon as we hear. Yeah, I wouldn't expect that, at least until some of the later rounds. I think once you get one tie, you probably do one of gentleman's, but un until that point, it might be okay not to. Manual retreat into the Cramorant spit here. It's just going to be a knockout on the Zard. Now going into Edwin's turn. Probably mean the Luminion does have plenty of fire energy to retreat in hand. Thinking about it. Turn three and ooh, oh, Steel Stone. Steel Stone, one card away. If he had that last turn, could have potentially had some sort of win condition, could have grabbed the Arvin to get like Ultra Ball Belt, easily gotten yeah. a knockout, had second Zard set up, ready to go, and then just needed another gust after that. But just barely not getting there. Is going to pop the seal stone to see what can be done this turn. Maybe they, maybe they did make a gentleman's then if they're playing this out. Yeah, they're trying to prove to each other who is in the lead, maybe, um, if that's the case. Oh, Lily <laughs> had his choice belt saying, oh, I really wish I had that one. Mm -hmm. But Arvin for Ultra Ball Choice Belt, as you were saying, it looks like it might be the choice here. Right. And then just discarding the choice belt, most likely with the off of the Ultra Ball. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, now the prize has been taken. The choice belt's no longer necessary mm -hmm. uh, unless the Giratina V Star um, comes into play. You can discard Max Belt, I guess, now that the. Sure, sure. Probably a little bit better. Yeah, this must be some sort of gentleman's thing if they're going for this. Um, did you, did we explain fully what a gentleman's agreement actually means? No, I don't think so. Okay. So in in the Pokemon TTG, there is a concept of a gentleman's agreement where if there is a situation where both players feel like they don't want to tie or like a tie is not much better than a loss or maybe even the same as a loss, they mm -hmm. might say that, okay, we want at least one of us to win. So even if the game doesn't complete we can decide together who is more likely to win, either based off prizes or board state or whatever they agree upon. And then the player who thinks that they will lose eventually could decide to concede in that case. And mm -hmm. it's called a gentleman's agreement because it's not enforceable. You, if, if you're in an official Pokemon tournament, it is allowed, it is legal, but you can't say, hey, judge, my opponent didn't concede. Like, we, yeah. <laughs> we, agreed, we agreed on whatever, whatever. So it, it basically comes down to your honor and your pride as a player. And... In this case, the players are playing it out maybe means that they made some sort of agreement in this case to right. try and concede. But I, I think the board state is just too it's, it's just too vague to really right, tell. Right. And Hector, I think, is taking one more turn, so I guess Hector is turn three in this case. Maybe they got some sort of extension of some sort. Oh, or like maybe, maybe they didn't yeah. maybe they didn't call time exactly when our stream timer hit. Sure, sure. But I I think both players are are playing as if this is like the last turn. Yeah, if, if that's not the case, I'm sure producers will will tell them. It looks like they are talking to the producers right now. Did they not get a time call? It seems that there is a little bit of confusion. Sorry, chat. <laughs> but we'll figure that out right away. They have a lot of options in hand, too, for Hector. They have the Roxanne now, too. Could have done something, but yeah, it looks like a uh, Mirage Gate, and they're gonna talk it out a little bit here. Yeah, they're they're talking it out. But yeah, the other the other thing you can do, gentlemen, is like prizes. Uh, obviously, there are tied on prizes here, and most people would just prefer to do actual board state because that's more meaningful, uh, especially because some decks like control, right? Like if you're yeah. shooting out prizes, then the non-control player is always gonna lose or they're always gonna win if you do a uh, gentleman's off uh, price count, but. Uh, yeah, I guess they'll, they'll resolve that and figure out who actually won that game. Potentially a tie. Potentially a tie. Totally fine as well. Uh, again, like I said, I think one-on-one -on -one is still totally fine. But yeah. it does put a lot of pressure on you to it actually does. win out. And one-on-one, -on -one, I guess, not as bad as one-two. So True. that is an option as well. We'll see what our players decide to do here. But hopefully we'll hear about that soon so we can actually declare a winner or a tie. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Maybe our producer is going to let us know what the case is there. If they are just tying, um, let us know. And if that's the case, then we probably just interview one at random. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Or, or, or maybe they, they are working out. We are yes. hearing this, so I think they are going to. They're, they're they going to make a decision. Agreement. Yeah. Well, if, if they do tie, maybe we can. Oh, I think I heard the judge is working out. Okay. Okay. So let's see what the judge says. Sure. Let's see who this win goes to, or maybe maybe neither. Would yeah, be kinda, like, would be kind of fun to interview both of them at the same time. I don't, we, I don't know if We do not have the mics for yeah, that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But that is kind of the nice thing because it is you know, not an official event. You're saying you can't have a judge be like, oh, my opponent didn't concede. We, we have a judge who can actually help determine board state that if you want. True. If, you, if, you, if both players are like, yeah, can you pick a winner here? <laughs> can uh, you please just we, choose? Our, our judge, Gabe, is a very skilled player. Very he is. Seasoned, he is. Uh, and is more than capable of making these board state decisions. So, uh, yeah. Do we have um, kind of like group stage bracket, how things have shaken out so far. If not, it's okay. Uh, otherwise, we can still keep talking about the other results. Okay, we do have the normal results. Tyler, 3-0. The lone 3-0. Josh did lose last round, so it's now 2-1. So the only match that hasn't concluded yet is the one on stream. So yes. everyone else looks like they are finished. Jared, we saw on stream already, yeah, like you were saying, 2-1. But Tyler actually has probably has the most unique decks, like by far, yeah. out of any, anyone, and it is now 3-0. Yeah, Tyler... What literally said in the Discord, you know, he's not going to EOC only because he couldn't register for it because the stupid registration caps. And he literally was like, this is my EUIC. <laughs> I, like, I have nothing else to prep for. Yeah. Obviously, he can go to Orlando, so the prep right. is still meaningful for that. Uh, but there's still money on the line. There's a prize pool, exclamation point prize pool, if you want to contribute and help out for that. Uh, right now, last I checked before we started today, it was $500. So first place gets $250. So that is on the line here. And Tyler... Looking like in a pretty good position, and I think also his decks just seem really solid for a lot of the meta. Ancient Box with Flutter Mains rolls a lot of these That's lost true. decks. 
something I'm wondering, now that I think about it, Tyler could be in such a good position that he might actually concede to someone in his round five if he to wants. Force a specific and and matchup, it, yeah. it is weird, but I mean, that's kind of the right he's earned if he, if he gets to himself in a position where he's that ahead of the pack. Right. Yeah. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. I hope it's not for our stream match, but I guess we, I guess the, we'll make them play it out anyways. Yeah, we, for we can either make it play it out or we can put on a different match. Yeah, that's true. Uh, totally that's true. fine as well. We, I, I didn't mention that part to the players, but I'll talk to them about it. I will say Tyler is has an argument for being the best player in Chicago right now. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's him or Tons of, I think uh, he's on a eight nine for nine day two streak or something like that. Is he really? Yeah. That's insane. Eight eight. Yeah. That's insane. That's so crazy. Yeah. And it's all it's all it's a deck that a lot of people just had no faith in this right. last format. Uh, yeah. the anti valiant stuff. Which is kind of continuing with he's playing the gouging fire EX deck, which is one that is not super popular, but I it's picking up a little bit of popularity here and it there. It did online. win on in Thailand, I believe, and right. their regional yeah. Yeah, championship. Recently. So. so it's a good deck. Uh, and Tyler thinks it's good as well, and I trust it's doing his judgment. Well. It's doing well. <laughs> He's certainly. doing very well, yeah. And again, I think his his two decks are probably, maybe not Ancient Box, but Gouting Fire is probably one of the least tested against decks. It is. For that's, all the competitors that's true, here, for right? Sure. So a lot of them might not even be playing it correctly or mm -hmm. dealing with it correctly. And yeah, Gouting Fire, 260 damage on a basic EX is a lot. <laughs> and if there's anyone that we can trust to play that deck correctly, it is probably Tyler, yeah. being that Magma Basin style deck. Right. It is the ancient version of Entei V that Tyler has been playing so faithfully in these past couple events. And he's he's piloting it well. Only needs probably one more win to lock up his slot. Mm -hmm. Even two ties would probably be fine, but his opponents want ID at this point, probably, right. because they need the win. So has to win at least one more, I think, to, to lock up his spot in the top four. Sounds good, yeah. I... Uh... Tyler's on a great path to make Top Cut be the first one to lock in that Top Cut with those two unique decks. Really excited to see. Really cool. I hope we can get them on stream. Uh, both both those decks on stream pretty soon here. I don't remember what round he's scheduled for. Um, but a quick note too, by the way. Our next round is going to actually be a staggered round to give everyone a chance to get lunch. Uh, so we're going to do basically two matches from round four next. So we'll do group A. I think we're doing group B round four and then group A round four. Uh, just to give them the, the group's a chance to have lunches. We'll probably switch off casters a little bit yeah, there, too. So we get some probably bringing Gabe to <laughs> talk some of these matches. Gabe, Gabe Shumway, by the way, should should say who is actually judging and helping out with a lot of these with the, a lot of what's going on. And uh, I think it's going to be... I think we're going to go to a quick uh, ad break. So, we'll see you in a bit. Hello, and welcome back, everybody, to Chicago Clash. Uh Quick summary of what happened. So uh, they did a gentleman's, and uh, Edwin did take the loss this round. Hector did go straight to get food because uh, this is like the lunch break for everyone. So it makes sense to make sure you have enough time to grab anything. So we're interviewing Edwin. Uh, Edwin, obviously, games didn't go as planned. Yeah. Uh, kind of talk through what was going on, especially the last game. Yeah, so the first game, I had to play around Manaphy. Uh, I, I opened up Tina. I felt like Tina had a... Doesn't have a great CPOW uh, matchup, mm -hmm. so if I could open Tina and maybe take a win there, I would have been in a comfortable spot since I'm not super comfortable in the Tina mirror yet. Um, so I don't play Manaphy in my my Tina build, right. so that was pretty bad. He immediately went for Greninja, and I felt like a turn behind, which I don't really want to do in the Tina matchup. Mm -hmm. And then in the second game, I had to make sure I didn't bench two Kumfei so he wouldn't have that free gear ninja. And yeah. it turns out he told me it was prized <laughs> after the match. So I was playing around something without needing to. Right, so that was yeah. kind of unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. I know that what, what was, uh, there was a play I want to ask you about in particular. And I just want to kind of go through what was going on in your head when that happened was when the Tina V star was in the active, it had like 200 something yeah. damage on it or whatever. It had like 190. Yeah. 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 And uh, obviously you wanted to save all that turn, yeah. but you had to, you had like none of the pieces in yeah. hand, and you had to go for the rock sand. So, kind of, what was your decision making process, process for that turn? Yeah, so I knew I needed to Sableye that turn to kill the Tina. So to set up perfect math, like one on each of the cone mm -hmm. face, and then ninety on the active. But I knew that like I needed to flower select first, and I had none of the pieces in my hand, and I knew that I needed to find a way to just draw cards as many as possible. And I didn't have a chorus. I think I think I had a boss in that mm -hmm. turn, so I was between boss and cram. So I decided to put the jet on the cram. At worst, I can cram uh, the, the Tina and then save save a life for another turn. But right. it would set me a turn behind to winning the game. So I decided. Yeah, and at just... best you just retreat with it, right? Yeah, so, and yeah. then I think in that turn I also put a grass energy on the Greninja. Greninja. Yep. I did that because I was actually going to attack with Verizian or um, Iron Leaves. Yes. Um, since he didn't have a Tina set up, I figured I can 
put up an iron leaves, uh, put it on the bench, take all the energy with it, and then just start attacking with right. it and find right. it away. So I figured if I put the grass on Comfe, then Comfe would be a target for right. a future turn of, of Cram. Yeah, so speaking of the Manaphy thing earlier and also your Zard list, what, what kind of decisions did you make, or why did you make those decisions with those two lists? Like, for example, uh, Manaphy and not being in Tina and then Palpad Turo in Zard. Yeah, so right now um, Jake and I have been testing a lot with uh, Tina specifically and Zard. Um, we felt that we just wanted to take lists that could just be consistent, no really tech cards for it. So mm -hmm. um, as we were submitting lists last night, we were just like, man, we should add Manaphy to, to Tina because in the Mirror and the CPA matchup, I feel like they're going to be not only popular here, but at EUIC. Mm -hmm. And then for Palpatero, it's a little way we found that you could try to take a turn from Control. Okay. Uh, control struggles when you can pick up your active and be able to loop it again. So right, right. it's not 100% like we auto control, but at least right. gives us a, a small chance. Yeah, and we them. saw that cause problems for Jake in his stream match. I don't know if he told you, but he, yeah. the last prize card was Turo. Yeah, so. the, the, <laughs> pri the, he prized Turo and Fire Energy, yeah. and he needed the Fire Energy to be able to Combustion Blast, and right, that yeah, was kind of the big one. Tragic, tragic yeah. for sure. Uh, now, kind of going into this event, you obviously have to do two decks, yeah. right? And you're someone who's kind of switched decks a few times in the last and throughout the season. Yeah. Uh, you're not like a one deck person, even though you did play a lot of Gardevoir yeah. this season. Um, so, how was the process for you to pick these two decks as your decks for this tournament? Yeah, so for the last six months, for regional specifically, I was playing a lot of Gardevoir, but I would switch in and out of Lost Box, sure. and I wanted to go something for a new rotation. I wanted to try something that was already proven in the last format. And was kind of similar to what I played before, which is Tina mm -hmm. in the Lost Box engine. And um, Tina has just been consistently good. It takes 50-50s about, or more or less throughout the board, kind of like Gardevoir did. And I like a deck that just has consistent power across sure. the board. Um, and then for Zard, Zard is just like, I think, has the best matchup spread. It's probably considered the BDIF. So I kind of wanted to just stick true to what's consistent and what's doing well right mm -hmm. now. That yeah, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, we're a week away now from EUIC, literally... Actually, less than a week because it yeah. starts on Friday. Next weekend. <laughs> next, next Friday, uh, yeah. How, how are you feeling going into it? Um, I'm a little nervous because I have to play a new deck that I haven't played before. Right. Um, I could probably play Gardevoir again, but it's not. I don't think it's to the power that I want to take to a tournament right mm -hmm. now, as specifically EUIC. Um, so I'm just a little nervous of what we're playing. We've been cooking up a list that we think we're pretty confident in, but we still need to test out and iron out and find those small tech cards. Sure. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck at EUIC. Uh, any shout outs you want to do? Any uh, where can people find you? Stuff like um, that. Yeah, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Edwin Arroyo, my name. Um, shout out to my sponsor, uh, 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 TCR mm -hmm. Gaming, for uh, all the support they've given me in these past couple of months. My family, who's uh, we're, we've been going through a bit, so they've just been nonstop supporting me right. with this journey. So awesome. Yeah. All right. That's going to be it for this interview. We're going to go to a quick break, and then we'll be back with that staggered round four coming up in just a moment.